Okay. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate sure. that. Sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Now, even though module 15 is not due until the 13th, so I, I put it there so that you can finish it early so that you can go back and do your other stuff, right, before you move on to 16. But I can't leave you before spring break without 16, okay? So I'm going to talk about it, although you're probably not going to see it until you finish 15, okay? Um, but this is now the beginning of adding and subtracting the fractions, okay? So we already know how to simplify them, right? We just factor them all up, and then we reduce, and we're done, right? We know how to multiply. We factor them all up, reduced, and then multiplied. And then we know how to divide. We factored them all up, flipped whoever we had to flip over, reduced, and then multiplied, right? So those are the processes for simplifying, multiplying, and dividing. Now we've got to get into adding and subtracting. And the reason why adding and subtracting is the hardest is because you have to have common denominators, right? In order for you to add and subtract fractions, you have to have common denominators. And it was hard enough figuring out what the common denominator was going to be when there weren't letters in the mix, right? Now you're going to have letters in the mix. So we have to start from the very beginning and kind of figure out well, how do you determine the common denominator when there's letters involved, okay? The numbers you're used to. And really what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to take the number, that's five, six, and list its multiples. So five times two is 10, five times three is 15, five times four is 20, times five, times six, times seven. I'm not gonna go too far. But then the same thing with the other one, six, 12, and then 36, and then so on, right? And if there's one already, you can stop, and if there's not, you would have to keep going. But you wanna find the least common multiple. So these are all the multiples of five. Well, not all of them, right? But some of the multiples of five, some of the multiples of six, and which is the first, the smallest number that they have in common? 30. It is 30, okay? So we know that the least common multiple between five and six is 30. Now we have to do the same thing but with the variables. So this is, gets a little bit weird. If I do x squared, what happens if I multiply x squared times another x squared? Yeah, x to the fourth. x to the fourth. What happens if I multiply that by another x squared? x to the eighth. No. x to the sixth. Yes. Uh -huh. And then yeah. times another x squared uh, would x be to x to the eighth, eighth yeah. and so forth, yeah. right? X to the tenth, yeah. Now x to the fourth, if I do that, if I go the next one, what's x to the fourth times another x to the fourth? x to the eighth. And then times another x to the fourth? x to the twelfth. And then so on and so forth. Which is the first one that they have in common? x to the fourth. x to the fourth. And so then the LCM between x squared and x to the fourth is going to be x to the fourth. Okay? Now, hold on, hold on, man. You know I'm about to ask questions, so I can wrap sure. my head around this. Why would it be x squared? Because that's the least common multiple of. It's x. not the least common multiple of this. It's oh. a factor of that, but not a multiple. A multiple is that thing it's or bigger. bigger. Oh, okay. 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 So my least common multiple for this whole thing is going to be 30 and x to the fourth. Okay. The fastest way to do it is you already know, the fastest way to do it is to look at your variables and determine, does that variable divide evenly into this variable? Yeah, I do. Excellent. It does. Yeah, so x to the fourth is going to be that common multiple. Does five, the smaller number, go into six evenly? No. No. So then only list the multiples of six and stop when you get to one that five does go into. So does five go into 12? No. Does five go into 18? No. Does it go into 24? No. And it goes into 30 though, right? No. So then that's the least common multiple. So you can do this a little bit faster without having to list everything if you just concentrate on the big guys, okay? So let's look 
here. This one's a little bit different because I have different letters, don't I? If you have different letters, the click, the trick or hint, whatever you want to say, is you have to put both, right? If you're going to write a least common multiple and this one doesn't have any Bs, you still have to put those Bs. If this one doesn't have any A's, you still have to put those A's, okay? Now, the numbers, does four go into five? No. Okay, so we start listing the multiples. Does four go into 10? It's gonna be 20. Correct. Keep going until you get one, right? right? And that would be the LCM for those guys. What about here? What would the number be? Uh, nine. Mm-hmm. And then X will come on down. Yep. Even though that one doesn't have one, yep. it has to be there. Okay. Good. Okay. Now what about this one? This one's more common. What will happen? Uh, Yo, know, the least common multiple would be 12. Yes. And, and what then, about the variables? Uh, What'd you say? Why did I say Nicholas? Is it Nicholas? I always get confused between Nathaniel and Nicholas. I don't know why my brain does that. Wow. I was like, did I just say the wrong thing? Wow. <laughs> I had a student, I had two students last semester, one named Nicholas and one named Nathaniel, and I swear I felt like every single time I was calling them the wrong one. I was like, why? <laughs> I don't know why those names get mixed up in my brain, but they do. <laughs> the whole semester, even during the final exam, I was like, and then it didn't help because one of them wanted to be called Nate and the other one wanted to be called Nick. And I'm like, you're still not helping me. <laughs> it's not helping. Okay. Now here it's the same thing. They just get bigger, right? So still look at the letters, still look at the numbers. What would be the number here that I would use? 20, probably 40. Yes, you would do 40, 60, 80, right? All of that, but the first one that eight goes into is 40. Then look at the Vs. Every single different letter that I see, I'm going to have to put them in the LCD. I just need to know which exponent to use. And you always go with the bigger one, right. right? So for V, what exponent would I use? Six. Mm -hmm. For the U, what exponent? Eight. And for the X, what exponent? Four. Four. And that's the LCM. Because I can take this thing and multiply by something clever to get this, right? And I can take that thing and multiply by something clever and get this. Okay? Try the next one. We won't say it out loud. Once you think you have the answer, let me know and we'll see if it's correct. Anybody get anything? What'd you get? Okay, x to the what? 11. No. Oh no, x to the 7. 7, okay, and then, and then w. w to the 11. No. no. Which okay. one's the bigger one? 7. Oh. You got w. <laughs> you put them together, <laughs> but you got 6 and 5. You just need to tell me which one's bigger. You don't need to put them together. Uh, Okay, and then what? Any more letters or no? Uh, B. Uh huh. What exponent? Exactly. Good. 
Good, good, good. Yeah, you don't need to put them together. Just give me the big guy, and then that's it, right? Good. But we learn from our mistakes. We learn most from our mistakes, right? <laughs> so it's always a good thing. Okay, now they get a little bit different. Now you start noticing they're putting in the pluses and the minuses, right? You have to remember that this is its own number. I don't know what number that is until I know what X is, right? But that is its own number. You're really gonna have to start visualizing everything as factors, okay? And this guy right here, when it's got a plus sign, it's its own factor, okay? So it goes all together, it's all or nothing, right? This one though has two factors, doesn't it? It has three, bless you, and it has X. So there's two factors there. When you're trying to figure out what the LCD is, you're going to write every single factor. You just have to figure out if you need exponents or not, okay? And they use this word, this particular one, but ne when you get to 1414, 14, you're not gonna know if they're relatively prime or not. You're not gonna get that hint, right? You're not even gonna get that hint on the final exam. <laughs> so you don't know if they're relatively prime. What this tells me is that my LCM is not going to have any exponents, okay? And the reason why is because I have three different factors in my denominator, and they're all completely different from each other, aren't they? Three is three. X, who knows what that is, but that's not the same as this because it's taking that number and then adding three to it, right? So all three of these are different. So when you're doing the least common denominator, you have to list all distinct factors, Distinct is just a fancy word for different, okay? So for here, I have to list the three, the x, and the x plus three. And so this is the least common denominator. If I didn't have fractions, then I would call this the least common multiple. But the fact that they're fractions and they're asking me to look at the denominators, it makes it a least common denominator. Just the denominator. So now looking at the second one, this, you've got the three, which is one factor, and the x, which is another factor, because those are multiplied together, right? It's a giant three times a giant x. Be careful. These two are not factors, because you've got to take that, and then you've got to add one to it, don't you? Yeah. So that makes this whole thing one giant factor okay so you've got one thing here one thing there and then this big denominator there so when I do my LCD I have to put all of them the 3 the X and then the giant 3x plus 1 okay but this one's in there to confuse you because you see 3x over there on the right and then you see 3x over there on the left and you're thinking they're the same but they're not you don't know what that number is once you know what X is that's fine, and you'll know what this factor is, but once you know what x is, you still don't know what all of that is until you multiply and add, okay? So looking at this one, what would be the LCD? D is in denominator, right? Okay. X minus one, and then uh, I put that in parentheses, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna put X minus two in parentheses. Mm -hmm. And then that should be it, because yep. you can't do nothing now. It's just one giant thing down here and one giant thing down there, right? Yep. One factor there, one factor there, put them together. So as soon as you see pluses and minuses, you need to know those are that's a factor together, right? So as soon as I saw 3x plus 1, that made that whole thing a factor. Okay, now they're, they're building. <laughs> now, before I can figure out whether my factors are distinct or not, I have to actually figure out what is it all I have downstairs. 
So before I can tell you what I have in common or the same, you have to factor these things. So if I factor the first denominator, they have a two in common and I get x minus four. The second fraction, if I factor that denominator, and x minus four. Remember, the LCD is all distinct. Oops, forgot the C. So what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be like the x minus four, and then, damn, no, it ain't gonna be. Four over three. These are just numbers, right? Yeah. How do we do the numbers? Multiply. Uh huh. Does two go into five? No. So if we double it, does two go into 10? Yes. So 10 is the number part, right. but I only have this factor on both of them. Can you square it? Don't square it. Don't square You're it. only supposed to list the distinct factors. So I can't list it twice. I only list it once. Now, if one of them was x minus four and the other one was x minus three, then I would put them both. Okay. okay? But this is what they have in common, okay? Another way of people saying all distinct factors is if you put what they have in common first and then what they have different. So some people will do the LCD like that. So what do they have in common? They have the X minus four in common. And then what do they have that's different? They have the two different and the five different. But what happens when I multiply the two and the five? Don't you get that 10, right? So that's another way of looking at the LCD, which may come in handy, <laughs> bless you, from now on, actually. Do I need to factor this denominator? No, but you got to factor the other one. Yes. It's going to be 2 on the outside and then x plus 5 on the inside. So then if I write what they have in common, what is that? x plus 5. Mm -hmm. And, and then what do they have different? The number 2. The number 2. So the denominators are getting crazier, right? It's okay, they're just trying to prep us <laughs> for the stuff later. So let's factor this one. So I can cheat because there's no number in front. Is that a 15 at the end? It is a 15, it looks really messy, but yes. So what are the factors of 15 that add to give me eight? Uh, three and five? Mm-hmm. And they're gonna both be negative. Correct. Now the second fraction, again, does not have a number in front, so I know it'll be x and x. Negative five, negative four. And so then keep with that same notion, what do they have in common first? x minus five. And then what do they have that's different from one another? x minus three and x minus four. Yeah, and that's the LCD, okay? So keep that idea. This is what they have in common, and then this is what they have that's different. But you have to put it all together and multiply it all out. Try the next one. This one's harder, right, because it has numbers in front, but it's the same idea. Have you factored that one? Yeah. 
What'd you get? X minus 11. Mm -hmm. X plus 3 plus 3. Good. And then what about this one? X minus 3, so X plus 3 and X minus 3. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Does it matter which way you put them? No. Nah. Right? As long as they're both there. Okay, so then what is the LCD? X minus 11 and X minus 3. That's what they have different from one another, right? Yeah. What are we doing? So you've done this part. Have you done that part? Hold on, what? <laughs> Do what now? You've done what they have different. This guy has an X minus 11. Oh, that one X, doesn't. They got X plus 3 in common. They one both five, have one X five, plus one 3. One yeah, yeah, so you have to have that one too. So you did it backwards, right? You put what they had common in the back and then what they have different in the front. Does it matter? No. No. It's multiplying. It doesn't matter what order you multiply. You're still going to get the same answer, right? So if we didn't put that, bring that down. You're probably going to ding us on the test. It okay. is. It's going to be wrong, yeah. And it'll. And if you were solving an equation and you forgot that guy, yeah. all, all your stuff's going to be all bad. Okay. okay. This one's a little bit harder just because it's got the fives so if I multiply the five times the seven we get 35 good what numbers would I use then what is that is that a 12 yes it's 5x squared yeah. plus 12x oh, okay. uh -huh, and then plus seven the other one is 5x squared plus 17x plus 14 uh, for that first one you can use uh, seven and five yeah and then what would the signs need to be Positive. Positive and positive. So, bless you. If I do this, plus 7x, plus 5x, plus 7, what does the first half have in common? X. So, I get 5x plus 7, bring down your plus. What does the second half have in common? Itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, what do I take out then? A 1. A 1. And you get the same thing. Yep. So, we have 5x plus 7 in common, and what's left over on the outsides? Mm -hmm. So we can rewrite this as 5x plus 7 and x plus 1. Now I'm going to do the other one, but let me grab another color. So here if I do 5 times 14, what is that? Uh, that's 70, ain't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 5, 5 times 14. Yep, yeah. yeah, you're right. So then what factors of 70 will add to give me 17? No, <laughs> stop, bro. That number grouping is good though. Okay. Uh, oh, you gonna give us a second to figure it What are the obvious pair that multiplies to give you 70? If you just look at it. 7, ten. seven times 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And don't those add to give you 17? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go 5x squared, positive 7x, positive 10x, positive 14. I'm writing really tiny, but I'm going to try to get in there. You got x in common. Mm -hmm. Yes, x. So you have 5x plus 7. Yeah. Plus sign, what does 10x and 14 have in common? Two. two and so you end up with 5x plus 7 so they have 5x plus 7 in common and then what's on the outside x plus 2 keep my numerator the same so then what is the common denominator here 5x plus 7 that's it you got it that's the whole thing almost if I say just what do they have in common that's good but if I say common denominator you need them all right okay good 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 tricky words right okay good 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 now, I'm going to do this one first. I wrote them backwards. I don't know why. So, here, 
they want you to write an equivalent fraction. Now this is helpful because this is one of the parts that you have to do in order to make fractions have a common denominator, right? It's great that I can tell you what the, con what the denominator should be so that they have the same denominator, but then how do I make it have that same denominator, right? You need to know how to do that. So essentially what's happened here is they've given me this fraction and they're telling me that fraction and another fraction apparently have this common denominator, okay? But how am I gonna turn this fraction into one that has that common denominator? Essentially what you need to do is figure out what is happening at the bottom and then do that same thing to the top. So that when you multiply the top and the bottom by something, you're not changing the ratio. The ratio is staying the same, it's just bigger, okay? So what is happening at the bottom? What are they multiplying by here? Five. Times five and a V, exactly. So you do the same thing here, and then what would that give you inside the box? 35V. Figure out this second one. <laughs> it makes it more fun if you talk like that. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay, what should go in the box? Negative 8x to the 4? Negative 8x to the 4. Okay. Out, baby. So you needed to multiply yeah. by a 2, and you have 5 over here, but you only had 1 there, right? So you needed 4 more to get 5. And then you do the same to the top, you end up with that. Good. So now they get weird. So that's the same thing. Figure out what did they do to the bottom? What did they multiply by at the bottom? And then multiply that same thing to the top. I'll work with you on the first one. What did they multiply this by in order for it to become that? A negative one? Correct. Okay. So if I take negative one and I multiply it by that numerator, what will you end up with? Negative two plus one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's another way you could write that? Negative two plus y. What's another way you could write it? Uh, hold on, let me, can I do it on the paper? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why are you doing that, man? Don't do that. Uh, hold on. So you have you have uh, two minus y. No. No, that's wrong. I'll put a negative one. And I'm gonna Remember, that. you keep the signs and then you just swap you just them around, the right? So positive y goes in the front, and negative two, two goes in the back. Okay. So and you could have put either one in this box, and they both would have been okay. okay. This is just more formal, right? Our variables in the front. We always like to have our verbs. Way, though, it won't, Alex won't count you wrong, no. Okay. <laughs> Later it'll come in handy to put them in the correct order. Here you may even want to put it in order before you figure out what they multiplied by. If I put those in order, it's a negative to you and a positive three. Switching them around mm -hmm. before, we, before you figure it out. Right, because okay. look over here, they use in front, right? Yes, man. Also, you're trying to make them look alike. Right. All right. Tell me that. If we have them written correctly, then it's easier to tell what they multiply by. Okay. You're going to give us a second to work this out? Mm hmm.
Do you know this one, Juan? Is it this hard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened from here to here? Uh, you multiply by negative one. Uh-huh, they just change signs, yeah, right? Change signs. So if you change the signs down here, change the signs up there, right? Yeah. It's the same thing as multiplying by negative one, right? Good. Okay. Now, they're going to take it easy on us for a little bit. <laughs> We're going to get to add and subtract now. But for now, the hard part is done for us. They're already going to have common denominators. Okay? We just have to get into the habit of combine them and then see if you can simplify. Okay? So if I actually combine 5 over 7x plus 6 over 7x, Trust me, when they don't match, you're going to do a lot of work just to make a match. Don't change the denominator when you add, okay? Keep it exactly the same. You're only adding the numerators. So what is 5 plus 6? 11. 11. And can I reduce 11 over 7x? No. You said don't change the denominator when you nope. Remember, this is the rule. If you have A over B plus C over B, it just becomes a plus c over b okay so you keep the bottom the same you just add and subtract the tops um i don't think i have my little book with me today i think that rule is on the little part where it talks about fractions do you have it yeah let me borrow it real quick so i can see yeah that's the book Fractions. No, it doesn't even have them. It has it backwards under polynomials. But see how you have two of them have the same denominator? Yep. See how they have the same denominator R? And then you just write it with the same denominator R, but, but you're P only combining the tops. Top C and Q. Okay. It's under polynomials because it's going to be the same rule now that we're talking about stuff with letters, right? So then what would I get here then? You have C on the bottom and then mm -hmm. should be 5 on the top. Mm -hmm. And can I reduce that? No, ma'am. No. Those are all Zs. There's no 2s there. So it's Z over 4Z plus 3. And then 5 over 4z plus 3. So you don't have 5z? No. Z plus 5? Z plus 5. Okay, over 4z plus Okay. You okay. got it. Okay. Okay. Could I simplify that? No. Right. Do no. you know why it's a no? Because you have that 4 on the outside with the 4z down there? Mm -hmm. the Is this, um, can this be factored? The four? The whole bottom. Can it be factored? No, not at all. Can the top be factored? No. Okay. Then are they exactly the same? No, no right? So you can't reduce it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can only reduce when they have common factors, okay. right? And these things are like their own individual guys and they're not the same. So you can't reduce them. I see what you saw. What I said, when you said, when I was saying Z, Z5 to uh, 5Z, that's multiplication. Five Right, yeah, not yeah, addition. Not addition. Mm -hmm. So what would I get for the next one? You'll get a y minus 5 over 3y plus 2. Mm -hmm. And that can be broken down. Right, neither one and they're not the same. So this is as far as they go. Okay, they still have the same bottoms, but now there's a little more, as a little extra going on. Now be careful, I don't know that I made this evident, but this negative is in the front. It's not a negative nine, it's a negative fraction. Whenever you have those negatives in the front, as long as it's not, even if it's a minus sign, it really doesn't matter. You need to put it with the top. So you can write this giant thing over 7c, 
but understand that that negative applies to the entire numerator. And this plus applies to this entire numerator. And then you can start figuring out what you're going to end up with at the top. So if I want to get rid of the parentheses, that's where you have to start doing your distributing, right? So what happens when I distribute this negative? So you're going to become, that's a negative 9C, mm -hmm. and that's a negative 13D. Mm -hmm. And what happens when I distribute a positive? That's going to stay, that's going to stay like it is. Positive 4C 14, and a negative, negative six, CD, yeah, or 6D. Six, six mm -hmm. Now, can I simplify the top? Yeah, you can have negative 5C mm -hmm. plus 19D. Oh, not plus. Minus, minus, my mm -hmm. minus, 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 minus. Yeah, that's right. Negative, negative, negative. 19D. Can you factor the top? Uh, 5C. Uh, nope. Mm. 5 can't go on tonight. None of that. Nope. Right. And they have nothing in common. So you can't factor the top, which means, and if it doesn't match the bottom exactly, you can't simplify. So this is the final answer. The same thing is for this one. So there's nothing in the front here. So when I write a big giant fraction, I don't really need to do anything to this numerator because there's nothing out front. However, there is a minus sign in front of that, isn't there? So you do still have to do some distributing, just not to the front guy. So the top does not have anything in the front, so I just wrote it down. But the back one is going to be behind the minus sign, right? So all of those terms need to be behind the minus sign. I'm going to subtract both of those things. So we get 8a minus 8x minus 4a plus... Mm -hmm. And so then that leaves us with uh, uh, four a, mm -hmm. and then you got a negative uh, negative uh, five x minus mm -hmm. five x over eight uh, eight a. Mm -hmm. And this cannot factor, which means you can't cannot reduce it. That, yeah. Try this one. Remember that minus is in front fraction. It's not in the top. This. Mm -hmm. So that minus applied to the whole numerator. That plus applies to this whole numerator. Distribute, you get negative seven, positive three. Distribute that, those signs stay the same, and then combine, you get positive, combine, you get negative 8. And that cannot be factored at the top, so it cannot reduce with the 4C. Good. Okay. Now this one looks like, just based on the top, looks like it might be able to reduce here I think so so I keep asking you that right can it be simplified can it be simplified and so far the answer has always been no but now we're gonna start getting into the ones where they can be simplified so there's nothing in the front here right so I can just write 7c plus 1 and is this plus sign gonna change those no, so it's just gonna be positive 8c and negative 7 when you combine them, though, what do you end up with? Uh, you're going to have 15C uh, minus 6. And does the top, can the top be factored? Yeah, by 3. 
Mm-hmm. Which gives you what? Uh, 5C minus 2. Mm-hmm. And now this is its own thing, and you don't have anything like it downstairs, so this is definitely not going to reduce, right? But what about number 3? Y'all can divide it into one another. Mm-hmm. So 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 9. 3 times. 3 times. So, so it will be 5C minus 2 mm -hmm. over 3. Over 3. C, Charlie. C. Yeah. There you go. So this one did have fact, um, reducing involved. I'm going to pause, but try the next one. Let's see. Hold on, don't do it. Don't give me the answer yet. I want to figure this out. Well, go ahead. We can walk through this a little bit. You may have forgotten to do this, right? Doesn't that minus apply to both? Yeah, right? So that minus becomes a negative 4y four four y? minus 3. Minus 3. And what's 19 minus 4? 19 minus 4 is 15. Uh huh. And then <laughs> six minus three okay, is three. You. That's where I messed up. That's where I messed up. Mm -hmm. These guys have a three in common, right? Yeah. So we factored it out, and then that three can reduce with this three, yeah. but you still have the five y plus one at the top, and you still have the y at the bottom. <laughs> okay, we have one more, and then I'm gonna stop this video and start another one because. After this topic, the denominators are not going to be the same, okay? And those are harder. This is just to kind of get us into the hang of, like, once they're the same, combine the tops, factor everything, see if you can reduce. That's half the problem. The other half is trying to make them the same to begin with. So here, there's really nothing more to do than y plus 5 on top of that common denominator. Yeah, because there ain't nothing else you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's both the same. But if we factor that denominator... You'll get, uh, you'll get that y plus 5 or y plus 1, right? Mm-hmm. And what happens to the y plus 5 and the y plus they 5? Cancel each other out. Mm-hmm. Then you're just going to have... You still got to put a 1 over there and make it a fraction. Mm-hmm. 1 over y plus 1. You got it. What happens in the other one? What do you get in the top? C squared minus one. Mm -hmm. And then Same. C plus one. And then how do you factor that? C minus one. C plus one. And then C, they gonna count C plus one, cancel out, cancel mm -hmm. out. C plus one is your answer. C, C minus one, C minus mm -hmm. one, sorry, C minus one. And it's really over a one, over one but really? do you have to write it no, when it's on top? To write it like that when it's on it, yeah. Correct. When it's at the bottom, it has to yes. stay. But when it's at the top, you can write it as a whole number. Okay, let me stop this one, and then we'll start another one for the ones that are different denominators.